With about a week to go before the MLB trade deadline, are the Blue Jays set up for success? Hey everyone, welcome into another Sun Sports Roundtable. Rob Long joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and Toronto Sun Blue Jays writer Rob Longley. And guys, the Blue Jays escaping Seattle by the skin of their teeth, winning the series finale as they now move on to Los Angeles. But a lot of eyes on the upcoming August 1st trade deadline. Steve, does Ross Atkins need to hit a home run or can he take his singles here and there and tinker with this club? I don't think he needs to hit a home run. I think he needs to be very specific in what he goes and gets. He needs to find a bat, uh, preferably a right-handed bat, but a bat that you can put in that middle of the lineup, five, six spot that becomes dependable and adds to an offense that seems to struggle. And I think that's the greatest need the Blue Jays have right now, despite what's happened in the last few days. The bullpen has been pretty good most of the year. The starting rotation has been better than pretty good most of the year. So I think the biggest concern is adding to the offense. And, uh, and I think that's the need that this team has more than any other. Yeah, I guess it, de- it depends on how you define hit a home run. I mean, obviously, they could use somebody who could hit home runs. Uh, as Steve says, that's sort of the biggest need right now is an impact bat that they can put somewhere in the middle of that lineup. Because we've just seen it too often again in that series in Seattle the inability to bring runners home. I mean, this team gets a lot of runners on base, whether it's through good at bats and walks or, or singles and doubles. Uh, they just don't have a, an ability to knock them in, uh, knock them in. And that's been going on uh, all season. Right. So um, Atkins, uh, Ross Atkins uh, addressed this last week. It's sort of in his last availability before the deadline. And the difficulty in improving this team is it is pretty darn good all the way through. Right. So, it's not a blow up, blow it up situation. It's a find a way to complement it situation. And as Steve suggested, the, the the pitching staff is pretty solid right now. The bullpen is uh, is pretty good, especially if they get Chad Green back, which it looks like they're gonna they're gonna have uh, probably in a week or two. You might want to add one sort of arm that by by that route uh, at the deadline. But the big goal and the big the big need right now is to have an impact bat and. Uh, uh, you know, you don't have to blow up your roster or your farm system to do it, but you have to be in that market and you have to be in that market somewhat aggressively. You know, it's really easy to sit here and say, this is what they need and this is what they have to go and get. And then when you break down the number of teams, I, th- I think it's it's almost half of the teams in baseball are going to be buyers. And so if half of the teams in baseball are going to be buyers, every time you're looking for a player, every other team is probably looking for that same player. And so, uh, you know, that's the challenge for Ross Atkins. It's not just, I want that guy. It's, I want that guy and I better beat out this team and that team and this team to get him. And that, that's the difficulty when you don't have a lot of assets to move deal-wise. It, it might be more than half the team, Steve. It could be as high as 20. The Jays essentially let Seattle back in the mix by losing two of three on the weekend. And and what we're seeing right now is so many competitive series, so many competitive teams. That series of the Jays in Seattle on the weekend felt like a playoff series. So you're absolutely right. There's going to be a lot of teams right now with the expanded playoff format and, and being at least on the fringes of the hunt right now. And then you see a team like what Philadelphia did last year, where we're, we're a very middling team at the trade deadline, all of a sudden got hot and made it all the way to the World Series. So why would you be a seller given the expanded playoff format and, and a a structure in baseball now that all only requires you to sort of get hot for little spurts at a time and, and to be ready to make a run come playoff time. So I agree. It's going to be, uh, there are going to be a lot of teams out there and it, it's not going to be easy to get the assets that you're going to try to be getting. Rob, regardless of what happens at the trade deadline, it would seem like there'll have to be some internal improvement for this Blue Jays team to really make some noise. And one guy that has been on a roll since the All-Star break is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. From what you're seeing, do you think he has finally turned a corner? There are certainly indications that he's that he's, that he's headed that way, Rob. But I'd like to see it sustained over a, a few weeks rather than a, a handful of games. Um, his at-bats seem to be a little bit better. Um, he's hitting for power again. And I guess if there's one thing that you're going to be really impressed with, uh, and, and would suggest that maybe he has hit the corner is two of the home runs that he hit in Seattle were opposite field jobs. And, and when Vlad Guerrero Jr. is hitting balls out to the opposite field, that suggests to me that his, his hand eye is, 
back to the elite level that it was when he w- it was when he was in his heyday in 2021, and that maybe he's going to ride that hot streak and, and and sort of drive this offense. But um, you have to see it for a little bit more than a couple of series. Just like, are we going to say that Bo Bichette is has turned the corner the other way because he had a terrible series in Seattle? No, not really. Um, early indications are that Vlad maybe t- may have turned that corner, but but show me for another couple of weeks or two before I completely buy into that. Rob just hit on what I think is the most salient point of the of the second half of the season. It may not be what Vladdy does, and it may not be what Bo does. It's going to be what does Vladdy and Bo do together? Because now we've seen Vladdy hitting in the, in the last while, post winning the home run derby and like, a really good series in Seattle. And Bichette did nothing. Before that, Bichette was doing everything, and Vladdy was doing nothing. I want to see what happens when Bo and Vladdy together are doing something, because that's when that lineup becomes so hard to pitch to, because you've got the two elite guys right there. And if one's going and the other's not, or as, as we've seen almost the entire season, then it's a struggle. And, and even in Seattle, as great as, as Vladdy was, it was every game, as Rob said, felt like a playoff game and went right down to the last out and the last pitch. And, you know, and it had that World Series playoff kind of feel. I want to see a week, one week where both guys are hot, where both guys are hitting home runs, where both guys are hitting extra base hits, where both guys are changing games. I don't think we've seen that this entire season. Yeah, and that goes back to our first topic a little bit about the need for another impact bat in the middle there. Teoscar Hernandez had his flaws as a hitter. He could be inconsistent with the best of them. But man, oh man, when he was going and, and Vladdy was going and Bo was going, there wasn't a better offense in baseball than than, than those three. So uh, you're absolutely right, Steve. We need those. The, the Blue Jays need those two guys to be going at the same time. And if you add some sort of an impact bat at the trade deadline, then maybe this offense can come close to what it had, be, had it has been over the past couple of seasons. And certainly when it comes to driving in runs, that's what's needed. One quick suggestion on an impact bat that you may not have to acquire and just get in your lineup, George Springer. Yeah. How about getting some of the $25 million worth out of him? <laughs> uh, you're not getting it. No. And, and you got three more years of him. Uh, so I hope that this isn't the best of George Springer. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. For Steve Simmons and Rob Longley, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next time on another Sun Sports Roundtable.